add to the stream. Oh, it's a weird shot. Okay, so um, Instagram, I've got you up there. I'll turn to you from time to time when I can see you. Hello, everybody else on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. You should all be down on this camera. So that's why I'm kind of like up to Instagram, down to the rest of the world. And let me open up my comments. Hi, viewer comments show up here. So the first thing, um, I would love it if you could tell me where you're watching from. I've already given my drink recipe to Instagram. I will give my drink recipe to the other social media. Mm -hmm. A little Don Julio tequila, soda water. The reason why it has that kind of orangey is I squeezed in a fresh orange and then I sliced up some, can you see the limes and jalapenos. So it's got a little spicy, a little tart. It's good. Mm. Where are you guys watching from? Let me know. Here we go, Corpus Christi, Texas. How are you, Robert? Good to see you. All right, so I have a special guest tonight. Her name is Aisha Thorpe. She works for Revolt TV. And if you don't know what that is, you better learn. Uh, it's Sean P. Diddy's uh, cable network. Hello, Ella from LA. Hello, Renee from DC. Let me welcome my guest. Hi, Aisha, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Good, first of all, am I saying your name correctly? Yes, you are. Okay. Nice to see you, because <laughs> you're also an iHeart alumni, right? Yeah, so I used to work at iHeart. Um, when did I start? I started a few years ago, and then I left maybe like two and a half years ago, like right before I moved to LA. So we crossed over probably for two years. I think I've been there five or six years. Now, did you ask to join on um, Instagram and I missed it? Are you also on Instagram? Um, I'm okay. on the IG live, but I can talk to you on this other link but too. But then it's my people can't see you unless we share the screen on Instagram too. Oh, okay. I think you have to like request to join the live stream or something. I can't believe uh, I'm giving anybody tech advice because I really don't know how to make it work. <laughs> Okay, because it's like two different, like the timing is different on both. Yeah, you have to listen to one audio or the other. Okay, let me try and add. Hello, Alan from Illinois. Maybe you have to press Hello, my name. Tony from Colorado. Ah, nope, that's somebody else. Elmo Rodriguez. I can't, oh, oh, I see beauty marked 92. That's you, right? Yeah. I see a hey, but I don't see the request to join. I think you have to press my name, I think. Let's see. Hide from a pin comment. No, hide live video from you. No, I don't want to hide it. Uh, December, if you're watching, tell us what we're supposed to do. Otherwise, if you're watching on Instagram, I will, you can probably hear what she says, but you won't be able to see her picture because you hear the um, audio from my computer right below you. So sorry about that if we messed it up. Um, but anyway, welcome to the show. This is the science of love. And that means we talk about all things love. So my first question I wanna ask is simply, how's your love life? Tell me about it. Um, well, my love life is pretty <laughs> non-existent right now because of the, you know, pandemic. Like, I'm not really dating because, you know, I feel like there's nowhere to really go and be like super safe. So I've just been, you know, just home chilling for the just most waiting. part. Waiting yeah. until it all is over. Well, um, my viewers know, but I met a boyfriend during the pandemic in the summer but I oh. used his caution and safety as a determinant of whether he would be somebody who could eventually keep me safe in life. So the first three times we met in the real world, we sat 10 feet apart in windy outdoor, it was when they had outdoor dining the first time last summer mm -hmm. and windy outdoor places. And then we did not touch. I mean, I think the third date we did a fist bump. <laughs> That was it. And then hand sanitizer right afterwards. And that was only the really the beginning of testing. Right. And so after three dates in the windy outdoors with masks on, he called and said, would you be willing, you know, would you be comfortable if we each got COVID tests? And then uh -huh. we met again. So he goes, because I'd like to give you a hug, which is very nice. So it was very slow and it was different because of the pandemic, which I kind of liked. It's like it forces people 
to be careful. I also heard this week that there's new data out from the dating sites and they show mm -hmm. that the number one word in people's profiles that's getting the most swipe rights is the word the vaccine or vaccinated. Really? So now it's a status symbol, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's actually pretty funny because yeah. like, I mean, I feel like a lot of people are still like really skeptical about the vaccine. So it's like that one word is actually like attracting people. It's pretty funny. Yeah, because think of all the hot young healthcare workers, the nurses and doctors who have mm -hmm. been vaccinated. So they get to put That's it true. in their face. Babe, I've been vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's a status symbol. So <laughs> assuming pandemic is going to be over by the fall, that's what I'm thinking in my life. So what would you say you've been doing since you haven't been dating with this year as far as like self and grow, a self improvement or personal growth? How have you used the pandemic to grow as a human? Um, well, I'm actually working on something like outside of revolt that I don't want to speak on yet because it's still like in the works. But um, I'm super excited about this one project that I've you know, take, taking it um, basically like upon myself to really learn like a new skill. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very challenging and it's very different, but I'm very excited for, you know, everything that I'm learning by um, doing it. So that's definitely like a big bonus. I feel like when all of this is over and I can finally like show people what I was working on, they're going to be like really impressed. So. Yeah, so I think that people, a lot of people are using this time to really build their career, sort of re getting ready to mm -hmm. break out of the gates with every, I mean, yeah. remember at the beginning of pandemic, the first thing everybody did is sat there and redid their LinkedIn profile and <laughs> yeah. their websites, right? Because there's yeah. they finally have time to do all those things that you've been meaning to do. So let me ask you this. Do you mind me asking you how old you are? I will be 29 next month. Ah, leaving your 20s in another year and a bit. So yeah. um, I like to always ask this question to my guests because I get lots of different answers. What is your relationship life plan? Assuming that there's not just one way and our life is very long. Uh, what is your life plan for your relationships? Um, you know, it's funny. I haven't, I don't want to say I haven't, thought about it, but I haven't really thought about it too much. I definitely don't want to have, you know, kids or be married like in my 20s. Like I knew that's something I didn't want to do. So I'm, I feel like, you know, around the 35 or 36 age range is when I might start, you know, wanting to settle down or at least, you know, find someone who I can settle down with in the future. But it's, I'm definitely not like in a rush per se, not now, I feel like. So if you haven't thought much about your relationship life plan, you should know that you're not alone, that it's one of the things that men and women kind of forget to do. I mean, we plan weddings, we plan our careers, we plan our education, we plan our retirement, but nobody plans their relationship life plan. And they, there is this idea that it'll just happen when it happens, right? When actually yeah. love doesn't just happen. Love has to be created. You have to market yourself. You have to go around a certain social circle that's the kind that has the kind of people that you would consider to be mates. And you have to start, you know, a few years before you close the deal with somebody. So that's one thing I would like gently suggest that all people, all genders of people of all ages think about their relationship life plan and what, and, and, and also there's my 17 year old. You're going to say hi. Oh, is it, you don't like that shot? No, I can try to. You can try to bring her on. Oh, look at that. When you have an IT department living right in the house with you in the form of a teenager, that's her <laughs> beauty mark 92. Send request. Okay. So now I, what, what did you hit to make that happen? That send request. I used my phone this time because my desktop, my laptop, it wasn't working. There it is. So oh. now we're going to have two audios. So I mute this one, right? Now I only hear one audio, which is, can you say hello? Hello? 
There you are. There so you we are. only so see we the top of your head on Instagram. Can you adjust that angle a little bit? Yeah. Oh I'm using my phone because my desk, my um, laptop, it's not working. So I'm on my phone right now. So. <laughs> well, I can hear you here. And I assume the live stream people. Let me ask you on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. Can you guys hear her audio? Say hello again. Hello. Because I do the mine on my computer, so I would only hear one thing. Um, um, anyway, anyway, I should I, let you know that one of our viewers says, uh, I'm the same, I shall, right? nobody wants to settle down and have kids. Um, I do want to say one thing though, that no matter what your relationship life plan is, like if you want to get married, if you don't want to get married, if you want to have kids, if you don't want to have kids, if you want to have 10 kids, if you want to have one kid, if you want to just live together, if you want to always keep your money separate, whatever it may be, I think it's really yeah. important that you tell potential mates very early on because so much negativity happens when people um, sort of keep these secrets inside their head about what they want in their yeah. life. Uh, so if I had to ask you what you think the biggest problem with dating today, what would it be? Um, wait, can you repeat that one more back time? on here because you're gone off Instagram. Sorry. There you go. Go ahead. Um, am I off again? I don't hear you. I don't hear you anywhere. Uh, let me... There, now I hear you. Okay. I'm going to try and join again on my phone. Okay. okay. I don't have you on Instagram. I just requested again. Okay, view request. Hey, Jonesy. Send I send a request. She's not on Instagram. But she's on StreamYard. Oh, now you're both. Now you're both. Okay, so now I'll kill this audio again. Okay, it's so funny. When you have two cameras, we need like a full tech department here. Okay, so my question was, what do you think the biggest problem with dating is today and relationship relationships? Um well, from my experience, I feel like um I feel like a lot of guys don't. I feel like they're not very chivalrous. Um, mm -hmm. And for me, like, I love a guy who is chivalrous and, you know, you know, holds my door and pulls out my chair. I feel like a lot of guys today are just really lazy. <laughs> so partly it's about manners, but also it's about showing, sacrificing a little bit, right? Working for yeah. relationships. So my theory my, is twofold in this, because I hear this all the time on show. One is that um, men don't know, they have no concept about gender roles anymore because they're afraid that if they treat you like a quote unquote lady, that that will be considered sexist and old fashioned and all that. And guys, the rule is in workplaces, don't treat us like this. Yeah. But outside of workplaces, uh, it's totally okay. Um, so that's the first thing. And the other thing is, I think there are many women out there, not you, but other women who've trained him before he shows up on your doorstep. And those women haven't expected it, demanded it, or stood and waited for it. By the way, if you want someone to open the door for you, you better slow down when you reach that door and just pause. So don't like go reach for the door. Like let yeah. him do that. Yeah. Give them a moment, right? Um, on the other hand, like sometimes these manners are just inefficient. Like for instance, if you're sitting in the passenger seat of his car and you pull up to a restaurant, you shouldn't expect him to get out and walk nine feet around the entire giant SUV to open your door. And in that case, it feels like inefficient and like you're. Um, helpless and can't do it. But yeah. after the restaurant, guys, you listen, after the restaurant, when we get back to the restaurant, and you're walking up to the door, that's when she will slow down and give you room to open the door for her. Doesn't that make sense? That does make sense, actually. I never thought about that um, car example. <laughs> and then yeah. also like, you know, with you know, the tech and everything, I personally, I personally believe that since both genders want to want to kind of work for each other a little bit. Now we have to remember that in any mating marketplace, at the same time, in the same mating marketplace, whether it's a dating app or a nightclub, are people wanting a short-term relationship and people wanting a long-term relationship. 
And the best the way, best way for, a for a guy to obtain, to obtain a short-term short relationship, relationship is to behave, behave like he wants like a long-term long relationship. relationship. So that's one of the so biggest problems. That's a problem. mating strategy that men use all the time. All the time. So, so if you are if you looking are for a long-term long -term relationship, I think that you want to, want to give, give them opportunities, opportunities to sacrifice because, because we all love, love something, something that we have to work, have to work for. for. All genders yeah. love something love they have to work, have to work for. for. Mm -hmm. so, so that may that mean, mean um, uh, I was on a session today on, uh, what's that app that we talk? Clubhouse. Clubhouse. <laughs> Clubhouse. And uh, <laughs> it was one about the science of love. and. and Someone said, um, you know, I, I, I text him, 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 and one of the guys said, if you are a girl who's an alpha who's going to text and call first, don't say, I need you to call me or I have a reservation here. Come give him a job. Like if you're yeah. like him in a restaurant, you might say, and flirting with him, you might say, hey, come find me later. I'll be over there. Now he's got to work for you. He's got to come and find you later in the class. So what you might say to him is, um, can, can you think you can find a place where we could meet outdoors where it feels safe for me? And then I feel like he's useful, I guess, right? Yes. You know, one of the books I wrote was called The Girlfriend Test. And I interviewed a hundred men, recently married men, and I asked them, why you married me? And why do you call the rest of us back? And many of the men said, you know, there's all these independent women, and I have this feeling like, like, she me? Everybody wants to meet him. Yeah. Yeah. So you all your all your women friends out there need to stop training them to not be judged. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's funny because, um, like you said, you know, alpha women, we may be like that at work, but when we're not at work, we want to, you know, be treated like women. And I'm like the same exact way. Like I'm a, you know, a manager at my job, so I don't want to be a manager like in a relationship, you know. So. <laughs> and, and not everybody not is the same, and you have to just let out the signals about who you are and what you'd like, and sometimes even say it very clearly, because there are people out there, I mean, one of the most interesting things is that research, as researchers begin to study more and more, there's been so little research on same-sex relationships, but one of the things they found in same-sex relationships is that since there's no gender role prescription, they have to kind of work it out, kind of who's going to be the boy, who's going to be the girl. I'm putting my fingers in quotations because we know that culture invented masculinity, but, um, but they have to sort of work it out. So we could also say that in heterosexual relationships, women and men also have to work out their gender roles because we've also put men traditionally into a very narrow bandwidth of acceptable male behavior. And men should feel like it's okay to say, do, and feel things that used to be considered feminine, but who, who gave them a boy or girl title, right? Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's pretty tricky, but I mean, for someone like me, I feel like, I don't know if the guys like pick it up, but I feel like I let them know, you know, I like, you know, dominant alpha men. So, exactly. Like, yeah. Unfortunately, true dominant alpha men who are high in testosterone also tend to be cheaters. Well, there's yeah. even oh. even <laughs> <laughs> testosterone makes them have more rocky relationships, more breakups, more divorces, more cheating. That's actually funny. Unless, unless, says unless they have religiosity or high intelligence. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. okay. I've seen somebody saying that you still have two devices open on your end. So are you guys still hearing an echo? You're here, you have two mics open on your end. So I'm gonna close you off on uh, Instagram. Hey, Jonesy, can you come and tell me how to close her off on Instagram? Because I see all the comments saying every word is an echo. Should I just leave IG and focus on the yard? But uh, someone's saying, yeah, let's just focus on stream yard. So, can you turn off Instagram and her on? Yeah. Um, Someone's saying that my computer speaker may be giving feedback, but I have no computer speaker on. I have you on. And I have her in my ear. So now I'm going to.
No, she doesn't. Yeah, she doesn't that. That. So, can you stop the shared screen on Instagram, please? Oh, should I? You, don't know how. you have to do it at your end. Uh -oh. Should I put things on or just leave IG? I can leave IG. You have to leave IG on your end. Okay. Is what has to happen. But December saying no echo, which is Better? weird. Everything I here is echoing on live stream. I wonder what it could be that's causing the echo because I don't have this on. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, are you, I just have a question, people uh, who are watching on Facebook or YouTube. Um, is it still echoing? Only when I'm talking, it's echoing? That's weird. Double check my speaker. Well, I have this little mic right here for my computer. Only echoes, oh, Renee says no echo now. So I think it must've been something to do with the Instagram. I don't know why. Oh, I mean, I turned okay. myself down. That's so weird. Or maybe you were coming into this mic. Ah, that's, you know what? You were right. I think Renee or somebody's roller girl said that, is that the computer was bringing it over here. Okay, never okay. mind. Okay. <laughs> if anybody has any questions for myself or Aisha, please put them in the comments and we'll have a, a look. Um, do you have any questions for me, Aisha? Um, yes. <laughs> so, um, like I told you before, I'll be 29 next month and I'm, you know, still focused on my career and, you know, just gaining new skills. So I'm not really ready or ready at all, really, um, to settle down until I'm like in my late 30s. So my question is, um, I kind of like I've I've watched movies and like TV shows and I've seen, you know, like the older woman who reaches a certain age and then she's like lonely or she feels like she has to like rush to like get married and have kids. And I don't, I don't really want you that. Don't her. Yeah. So it's like, how do I not become her hopefully? But yeah. Well, the answer is to have that relationship life plan. So it doesn't suddenly kick you in the butt one day. Um, yeah. You know, I, I want to, you know, remind you that 20% of women in the human species cross-culturally around the world do not have their own biological children because we evolved as cooperative breeders and that non-biologically producing women are also very important in raising all the children of the world, whether it's their brothers and sisters' kids and their genes mm -hmm. live on through them or whether it's employing parents who feed children, which is also being a kind of parent, right? So yeah. um, there's no, you know, I don't have any opinions on whether somebody does want to have kids or not, but the biology hasn't changed a whole lot in our evolution. The height of female fertility is the age of 20. And it comes wow. around there for about 10 years. And it takes a bit of a dive at 30 and falls off a cliff at 35. So despite wow. what you hear about the celebrities having babies in their 40s, you got to know that they're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on fertility treatments, or they're having surrogates, or they're using somebody else's egg, right? That's the main thing. And which is all okay. I'm not judging it. But mm -hmm. I just want people to not be surprised. That's the other reason why the egg freezing industry has blown up in the last 10 years, as women have been using big portions of their fertility window to uh, for education and career building, they've made the decision to freeze their eggs. Now, the problem is yeah. we don't have a lot of frozen out, unfrozen embryos walking into kindergarten classrooms. We don't know the developmental disabilities that someday might be associated with huge amounts of previously frozen um, embryos. So it, the technology is still new and they're ha the companies are happy to take $20,000 of your uh, you know, pre-tax money and, and freeze your eggs for you, but is it gonna work? So that's the first thing is that I think everybody needs to really think about whether they wanna have their own biological kids, if they'll be comfortable adopting, if they'll be comfortable using somebody else's egg. Like these are really important decisions to make and you gotta think about your comfort with that. Because what if, you get to a stage in your life and you're 37 and you meet the greatest guy and you say to him, no matter what happens, I want to be with you. And I am so happy to adopt kids if that's what we need be. And he says, no, I don't ever want to adopt kids. I only want my yeah. own. 
which happens. Uh, so you have to like think in terms of not you only making your decision about what you want, but finding a mate who's on the same page, right? And that's why we're also seeing so many single women reproducing on their own because it's been harder to find that mate. But I'm telling you, I've been a single mother for 15 years, not by choice. And it's a hard life financially and time-wise because kids need the most expensive thing you have, which is your time. You can't yeah. just leave them on the shelf when you go to work. They need you. <laughs> <laughs> so I do say like, really think about what you want and don't forget about biology. You see men, we used to think that men don't have a fertility window, that basically they could impregnate a woman until they're in their seventies or eighties, which indeed they can. But now we are starting to see all the developmental disabilities with men over the age of 40. For instance, high rates of autism, right? So part of the oh, reason wow. why we have so much autism in our culture now is because people are having babies so much later. So sure. it's just things to consider, not to put pressure on you, but it's like, it, it's interesting that when you posed the question, you weren't even thinking about procreation, you were talking about loneliness later. And I'll yeah. tell you about <laughs> that peers are attracted to peers across the lifespan, right? I mentioned that I met a boyfriend during the pandemic. He's my age. His kids are around the age of mine. We're both facing an empty nest soon. We have all our references from music to movies to news events are all the same. So we have so much in common because of that. So you will find, you know, being 39, being 40, being 40, being 50, being 60, there are always mates out there. So... Mm -hmm. The loneliness factor I wouldn't be concerned about. It was more like thinking about what you really want and whether you're comfortable to just be a great allo parent. Yeah. Moms. Because I just don't feel like I'm like anywhere close to being ready <laughs> to like settling down. So I just hope in like 10 years, I don't regret. Well, not I'm regret. How, that, like, how old was your mom when she had babies until how late? When was her last? It's funny that you asked that because I was going to say, so my mother had my sister when she was like 24, 25. And then she had me when she was 39. Oh, so there's like a big, yeah, there's a big um, age difference. So were you a mother, surprise baby or a different relationship? Um, A different relationship. She actually was pregnant before me, but she miscarried. It was a boy and then she miscarried and then got pregnant with me again. So um, she was 39 and my father was actually 47. Wow. So, so this is a model you have in your head. And you know what? Yeah. I kind of had the same thing too. Like my, you know, now we're talking about a different era, but my mother was a career woman in the fifties and did not get married till she was 31. And that was considered full old maid at that point. Oh, wow. So in order... <laughs> to get married at 31, she had to reinvent herself as a Catholic virgin and marry a 21 year old, my dad. Wow. But they were married <laughs> after they part. They were married 40 years. So, wow. uh, <laughs> so <laughs> anything's possible. The secrets we hide, right? <laughs> uh, I also found another brother recently. So she was having fun when she <laughs> 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 But one of the things, the reason why I asked you about your, um, how old your mom was is not only a model for the family that lies in your head, but also, mm -hmm. you know, the later a woman has menopause, obviously the later she can have kids. And the way you sometimes determine that is age of first period, right? Cause we all only have about 400 eggs tucked, tucked in our ovaries and we shoot one or two a month down for about a, is it a 30 year period or something? And so women who get their first period um, much later, it shifts that fertility window for them. Yeah, she had hers pretty late, I feel like. Yep. I think she was like in, in high school. So you so. might have biology on your side. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, well, we should probably wrap up now. Thank you so much for giving me this amount of time. Is there one last question you would like to ask me before we go? Not, I know, I don't. Thanks for talking to me. Um, I'm getting too much bad news here tonight. Uh, where can people follow you? I notice on uh, Instagram, your I'm beauty underscore marked 92. And then on, on Twitter, you can just follow me at Aisha Thorpe. 
at Aisha Thorpe. And I'm reading some of the comments on Instagram. I have former students here. Oh, thank you for your nice compliments. Uh, somebody has one quick question for me that I should answer. When did I know I wanted to go into psychology? Well, like Aisha, I had a big career in media when I was young. I was a local news anchor and I hosted television shows. And it was only when I settled down in my late 30s to nurse my babies that I started taking psychology classes because I was so curious about the brain that was developing inside my womb and the brains that I would be responsible to help develop when they came out. So I didn't go back to grad school till I was 36. And I got a master's and PhD between the age of 36 and 45. So uh, while That's I was amazing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, anyway, so good to see you, former student. How are you? And thank you, Aisha, for being with us. We will say goodnight now. I always appreciate it. You guys can always listen to me from 4 to 6 live on KFI AM 640 Los Angeles. That means we're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. And my podcast, which you can find wherever you get your podcast, is called Mating Matters. Thanks for being such a good sport, Aisha, and sharing Thank your story. Thank you. Bye. Bye.